Okay, kids. We are now going to do a vertical circular motion. Have you started yet? Hello, hello viewing world. We're going to do a vertical circular motion. Up till now, you never had to deal with the weight of an object interacting, interacting with its centripetal force or centripetal acceleration. We've always dealt with things that are either you know, re rotating horizontally or we're in outer space where the only force acting on something is gravity. But now we're going to do vertical circular motion, and it will be fun. Here we go. <laughs> vertical circular motion. We're going to consider three scenarios. One where a car is driving over a bump, one where a car is inside a loop-de-loop, -loop, and one where you've got a ball on a string, just as you see me demonstrating here. So let's start with the car going over a bump. Imagine you have a 1,000 kilogram car. It's going at a speed of uh, 20 meters per second. It goes over a bump whose radius of curvature is 50 meters. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a moment. And I want you to find the normal force at the top of the bump. That is, find the normal force as it's cresting the bump. So, so here's what I'm looking at. Here's my car, and it's going 20 meters per second, and then it encounters a bump. It goes over the bump, it crests the bump, goes over the bump, and then continues on its way. But traveling on this bump, is identical to traveling along the portion of a circle, or a portion of a circle. And it's a circle whose radius happens to be 50 meters. And so although he's only you know, traveling over a small arc of this gigantically huge circle, right? you've got this gigantically huge circle, but although he's only traveling over a small part of it, he's still going in circular motion for this period of time. Let me tell you, when I was in high school, and these parts were not called Rancho Cucamonga, they were called Etiwanda, Altaloma, and Cucamonga, and then those three cities got together and formed one big mega city called Rancho Cucamonga. I used to be able to travel on 19th Street from Fontana to Upland and hit almost no stop signs and no stop lights. And, and I don't know if you've been on 19th Street, but it really undulates. And so I would go really, really fast and go over those bumps. And then how does it feel when you go over one of those bumps? Like you got to pee. Like what? Like you have to pee. Okay. Uh, all right. I was thinking more like it feels like you're momentarily weightless. Yeah, yeah, you know, you feel that woohoo feel, you know, when you go over a bump like that. And so that's what's happening here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a free body diagram as we go over this bump. Okay, first of all, I've got one force acting on this car, and that's gravity, mg, and it's pointing down. Tell me, what's the direction of the normal force on this car? Yeah, up, and it's kind of like what Earl and I, and I were talking about earlier. How do I know it's up? Because the ground is below the car. So the ground is pressing against the car, the car is pressing against the ground, and so the normal force is going to be up. And then here's my next question. There is acceleration here. Is the acceleration upward, is it downward, or is it tangent to the circle? What's the direction of the acceleration happening here? Last period, every single student got it right. Uh, every single student got it wrong except one student. I'm curious if you guys will do it better than last period. Tell me, how many people think the acceleration of this car is upward? Almost nobody. How many people say the acceleration of the car is tangential? Okay, many of you. How many people feel that uh, the acceleration of the car is downward? Absolutely nobody. Wait, Alfred, do you think it's downward? Uh, 
<laughs> I saw him motioning. Just say yes, Go ahead, Alfred. Uh, <laughs> oh, I saw. Okay, then let me not. So tell me, uh, uh, well, let's say Alfred did say the acceleration was downward. Would there be some, you know, uh, what do you call it, justification for the acceleration of this car being downward as it's traveling in that circle? Maybe as it gets on the other side of the arc, it's like for a little bit. No. Remember, he's traveling in a circle. What's always the direction of the acceleration when you're traveling in a circle? Towards the center, right? That's what we call it centripetal, center-seeking acceleration, right? Are you guys okay that this car is accelerating towards the center of the circle? So absolutely no one got it right this period. Alfred, were you thinking that? I was thinking. Yeah, it's yeah, something, something close to that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're not going up. You're not still going up. Thank you. Which is weird. Yeah. It's <laughs> still going to start flying. Right. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, your acceleration is downward. I want to really drum that into your head. Whenever you're traveling in a circle, your acceleration is always directed toward the center of the circle. If not, then you would go off in a tangent forever and ever and never be traveling in a circle. So there's my acceleration. So I'm going to define up as positive, okay? And then I'm going to complete this problem. I'll define up as positive. So I'll do sum of the forces equals ma. Alrighty, I got normal force up, so he's positive. I've got mg down, so he's negative. And then I've got m equals, tell me, what should I plug in for a? Whenever you're traveling in a circle? Say again, Noel? A negative v squared over r. Wait, well, v squared over r, I remember, because that's centripetal acceleration. Why do you want me to put a negative in there? Because the acceleration's down. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys okay with that? Okay, so. So let's go ahead and solve for my normal force, okay? My normal force, mg, it's a 1,000 kilogram car, so it's a 9,800 newton car, equal, oops, minus 1,000 times 20 squared over 50, okay? And so just trust me, I do the math, punchy, punchy, and I get 1,800 newtons, okay? You guys okay with that? A normal force of 1,800 newtons. So I want you to notice that in this scenario, my picture is not entirely accurate, okay? This would be accurate. A weight of 9,800 newtons and a normal force of only 1,800 newtons. The normal force isn't equal and opposite to the weight. No siree, the normal force is significantly less. In fact, if I went even faster, what would happen to my normal force? Yeah, it, it'd get even less. Until finally, if I went fast enough, what would my normal force be? Zero. Zero, you'd get air. And so this is the next problem I want you guys to do. Example two, at what speed do I get air? That is, at what speed, what's my normal force at that speed? If I get air? Zero, Zero right? Because I'm not in contact <coughs> with the road anymore. It's going to be the same problem. Your mass is still 1,000 kilograms. You don't have to write this down if you don't want to because it's written down over there. Your uh, uh, radius of curvature is 50, but now you're going to be finding what your speed is. Your speed isn't 20 anymore. You're going to have to go faster than 20 to get air. Please do a free body diagram. Do some of the forces equals MA, and let's see what you get. And I'm going to walk around that and help you. Okay, yeah, that's all well and good, but remember, your normal force is zero. You don't even have to draw an upward picture if you don't feel like it. Higher. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's good enough. There's your free body diagram right there, man. One force. Right, drive the car. Yeah, I see a correct answer in your future. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, there's 
Beautiful. Remember, your acceleration is, zero, uh, is negative yeah. as well. <clears throat> there is no force acting horizontally, so erase that. And you don't even need the normal force because the normal force is zero. But if you want to put normal force equals zero, that's fine with me. I mean, I'm not, I won't, you know. Also, uh, don't, don't confuse yourself by putting a horizontal arrow there. I guess I shouldn't have put that horizontal arrow on my, my drawing. I just want to show you what direction the car was going. But in a free body diagram, there's no horizontal arrow anywhere. There's no horizontal forces happening here. Now just use some of the force equals MA and John Winter on these. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Hello, good job. Forever change. and do another. <laughs> All right, well, I'll get this eventually. There we go. Get it? OK, well, I've got to tell you, and I assume the camera's still pointing here, and so that's good. Since you got no <laughs> normal force, all you've got is mg and your acceleration downward. And so you know what? I'm going to define down as positive. Is that okay with you, guys? I mean, I got acceleration down and mg down. I might as well define down as positive. So I do some of the forces equals ma. So I got mg, which is now positive, equaling mg squared over r. By the way, does it matter if I was driving my Honda Civic or my Toyota Sienna van? Would it matter what I'm driving as I go over that hump, that no, bump? No yeah, no way, because the masses cancel. So all cars will experience the same wonderful feeling of getting air, you know? And so you end up with this, you know, V is 22.1 meters per second. Okay, any questions or problems on that? Okay, looks like you guys got under control. Let's do the next one, a car on the loop of the loop. Okay. You've got a car in the loop the loop and I, Leilani will get back here soon and that's fine. Here's a car in the loop the loop. Example number three. Okay. The mass of the car is 1,000 kilograms. You are <laughs> pressing on the accelerator to maintain a constant speed of 25 meters per second during the whole trip. The radius of the loop the loop is 30 meters. And I want to know what the normal force on the car at the top of the loop is. So let me show you what's going on. Loop the loop. So here's my car. And my car enters the loop the loop and goes up the loop the loop. I can't make a very good car there. Okay. Well, eventually the car finds itself right there. You guys okay with that? The car is at the very top of the loop, the loop. 
let's go ahead and make a free body diagram. Tell me what's the direction that, that gravity is acting? Downward. You guys okay? Down. So mg is down. Now I've got normal force between the car and the track. What's the direction of normal force? Is it up or down? This is again, you've got to use your own cleverness. The track is now above the car. If the track is pressing on the car, what direction is the track pressing? Okay. Down. Absolutely. Your normal force is down. Tell me, where would my car have to be in order for normal force to be upward? On top of the loop. Yeah, and, and, and I might give you a problem where that happens, <laughs> where if the car was traveling above the loop the loop, or maybe you're on a Ferris wheel or something, but, but that's not what's happening here. The car is below the loop the loop, so normal force <laughs> is down. And what's the direction of the acceleration, up or down? Um, down. Why is it down? It's got to be directed towards the center. So your acceleration is directed towards the center. So what direction do you suppose I'd want you to define as positive, up or down? down. Heck yeah, I mean, I've got every single thing on there pointing down. So let's define down as positive. Please complete this problem and find me the normal force at the top of the loop. Good luck, you guys. So the normal force you don't know, so you're going to have to just call that F sub M. That's what you're actually solving for. Well, you can't cancel the M's, because the F sub M doesn't have an M multiplying it. So you don't get to cancel all the M's, because you don't all have M's. <coughs> You are correct. I didn't use. Because they did last week. Oh, yeah, you looked at that. Oh, you looked at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my second character. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so good. Yeah. And so you do. Oh, yeah. You're really back into back in there. I didn't put my name on it. And normal force plus I did you like until equal the mass times the force. So I'm going to get 11,000. I have some bad news. 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 I have some bad yeah. Oh my God. Oh, by the way, that's all that's that's down. Is that what's positive? I assume you've got it right. No, I'm not giving up. No, thank you. Okay. Hey, uh, there's. Oh shoot, man! I'm running out of time. Hey. Uh, <coughs> so I got F sub n plus m g equals m v squared over r, and you'll notice they're all positive because they all point downward. So I got my normal force equaling. 9,800 newtons plus 1,000 times 25 squared over 30. So I get an F sub N of approximately 11,000 newtons. <coughs> you guys okay with that? Okay.
So. <coughs> we spent so much time talking about the review Xerox that I'm not going to have enough time to do the bird. I'm sorry, do the uh, ball on a string. So, so let's just do it quickly. Imagine I've got a ball on a string and it's moving around. The mass of the ball is 1.0 kilograms. The length of the string is 0 0.80 meters, meaning that's the radius of the circle that the ball is going in. The speed of the ball, I'm keeping it at a constant five meters per second the entire time. Now you know that's not really realistic because as a ball goes round and round, it will tend to go slower at the top and faster at the bottom because of conservation of energy. Well, oh, you only get over here. Because of conservation of energy, and we'll talk about that in a succeeding chapter, a subsequent chapter, but, but we're gonna pretend that I'm having it go a constant five meters per second at all time, even though it's not, it's not realistic. And, uh, and so I want you to find the tension at the top and the bottom. I'm going to do the top. That's the top. So here's my ball. Here's the string. OK. Tell me, what's the direction of tension? Is it up? Where's the string? Down. Yeah, if the string is below the ball, it can't be up, right? My string can't, can't exert a force because it would go slack. So the tension is down. Tell me, what's the direction of the weight of this ball? Down. Down, exactly. And what's the direction of the acceleration? Down. Towards the center of the circle, down as well. So are you okay that if we define down as positive, then I've got some of the forces equals ma. And I end up with tension plus mg equals m of v squared over r. And they're all positive. And unfortunately for the folks at home, just believe me when I say tension is equal to about 21 newtons. That is, you plug in all that stuff and you get 21 newtons. Oh. You guys okay with that? <laughs> so here's the next one. I want you guys to do it at the bottom. Or at least get me the equation. Here's, or get me a free body diagram. See if we've got like four minutes left. See if you can draw a free body diagram of that situation. Let me at least see if you guys put your weight and your normal force and your acceleration in the correct directions. I'll give you like a minute to do that. And then I'll, uh, Okay, time's up. What's the direction of the tension? Up. Uh, good, because that's where the string is. What's the direction of, so tension, what's the direction of the weight? Down. Down. And what's the direction of the acceleration? Towards the center. Towards the center, which is up. Excellent. Excellent. So if I define up as positive, <coughs> you end up with the sum of the forces equals ma. You end up with tension minus mg equaling mv squared over r. You guys okay with that? Because mm -hmm. tension is working against gravity now. Or another way to think of it is you want to go around in a circle, but gravity is working against you moving in a circle, which means your tension is going to have to be bigger. And so your tension ends up being 41 newtons instead of 21. And does that make sense? Does it make sense that you'd have more tension at the bottom than the top? Yeah. Hey, sure, because look, here's the last thing I want to show. I mean, hey, if if I have this yo-yo, if I do it slow enough, how much tension could I conceivably have at the top? Zero, right? Here, look, it goes slack. I can have zero tension at the top, but I'm never going to have zero tension at the bottom because the tension has to at least counter gravity. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, and good luck on tonight's homework, even though you'll do it tomorrow night. Woo!
Thank you.